It's important to be able to test Windows Autopilot, and one of the easiest ways to test something is in a virtual machine. It lets you quickly revert a checkpoint back to a starting state so that you can retest something. So that's how we should test Windows Autopilot, right? Using VMs with checkpoints. Except the issue, as Michael Niehaus explains in his blog, is that Windows Autopilot isn't designed for VMs. It certainly isn't designed to be tested repeatedly using checkpoints. And so some of the features that Autopilot uses to fix stuff in the background end up causing issues for admins doing these kinds of testings. These kind of testings? Doing this kind of testing. Anyway, there is a way around it. And there is a proper way to use VMs, checkpoints, and Autopilot so you don't get caught out. Michael's already detailed it on his blog, but I really wanted to give it a try, so here we go. We'll start out in the Hyper-V machine, and from here, grab the latest version of Windows 11, 22H2 in this case, Business Editions, updated August 2023, just download that, it's an ISO. Ends up something like this. Here we have the ISO for the latest updated version of Windows 11 22H2. Okay, all good. Now we need to convert that to a VHDX, because that's the simplest way to get a virtual machine out of an ISO. So we do that. We run convert Windows image and give it an addition of enterprise and a source of this path here and the file name dot ISO. Okay, give that a few moments to convert that ISO to VHDX. And after a few moments, that's all done. So we can close that. We can get back to downloads. And you see we've got this VHDX file here. Can't tell it's VHDX because I haven't enabled the file name extensions, but the VHDX file right here. And we can use that in our virtual machine, which we haven't yet created. So let's do that. So from here, create a new virtual machine. Choose next and we'll call it Windows Autopilot VM. Put it somewhere useful. Choose next. And go for Gen 2 and next and give it a bit of RAM. Go for 496, 4 gig. And choose next. And we'll put it on the uh, internet connected switch that you have. If you don't have one, create an internet connected switch and then use that. Choose next. And we're going to go with no virtual hard disk at all, and we'll attach one later. That'll be the VHDX file we've just created. We choose next and finish. And we will go and go back into settings. We're going to add another uh, virtual CPU and enable the TPM. Okay, good. Next, we're going to go into SCSI controller, add a disk. So we're just going to go to new. And choose next and go for differencing. Next, and we're going to add a new disk called Windows OS. Put that in the right place. Just here. Choose next and we need to find the disk that we want to use for the parent, which is this one here. And choose next and finish. Okay, finally, we just need to fix the checkpoints. At the moment, we're using production checkpoints. We want to enable them, but not use production checkpoints. We're going to go with standard checkpoints and choose apply. Choose OK, and we're all good. So here we have the original disk that we have as the parent, and then this is the differencing disk that will be used for this virtual machine. Okay, so we'll go into Hyper-V, right-click, connect, and choose start. So as you can see, we just boot this device until we get to the first page of the out of box experience, which is right here, and we do not navigate forward. So from here, we're just gonna choose shift and F10, or in some cases, shift function F10, and you get a command prompt. Now, just need to get to PowerShell from here. So we're gonna type PowerShell. And then we need to uh, be able to run some script in this PowerShell window. So we're going to need to set execution policy to bypass. Just like that. And now we need to install the get Windows Autopilot info script. So that will be install script get Windows Autopilot info. And we'll do a 
your thoughts on that. Just approve all of these. Mm -hmm. Check you have an internet connection before you do any of that. All right, that's better. So make sure you have an internet connection before you start doing this. Obviously the wrong switch. So we need to install script, get Windows Autopilot info dash force. Let's prove that. Okay, so we're good to go. Now we can gather the information about this device and put it into our tenant. So get dash Windows Autopilot info dash online. Now, because we're using the online version of this script, we're able to sign directly into the tenant and get this information for the device put straight in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Just log into my tenant. Now, when you log in, make sure you have an appropriate account with the right level of permissions to add devices to Intune and to Azure AD. Now we've signed in, it's just gonna to connect to the Intune tenant gather the information for this device and put it into it in tune autopilot for us. All right, so confusing error there. It response code does not indicate success, not found. Let's give it a few moments and see if it's in the tenant. Let's head over to our Intune environment and choose devices and if it's there then well I only have one machine now and I had zero before I started this so it definitely is the right one uh, so this is a serial number ending in one three head back to that machine and it's yeah ending in one three right there okay so that's the right machine I'm not sure what happened there with the error message but never mind that's not the point we'll go back to this and take a look at the profile status so it's not assigned a profile yet Grab this device, check where it is. It is, it's in the Windows Autopilot Devices group now, which is great. So that won't be long for it to apply that profile. We'll give that a few moments. While that happens, let's go back to the virtual machine. And that's all we need from this virtual machine right now. We actually need to turn this off, sysprep it, and get it, and get it ready to be a checkpoint. So we will just sys prep this machine now because we need to get it back to being ready to be a checkpointed virtual machine. So we will go to sysprep, which is in the sysprep folder. It's sysprep.exe slash generalize slash ubi slash shutdown. Okay, so that's gonna do everything it needs to do to get this machine ready to be a checkpoint. So we'll give that a few moments. And actually at this stage we have a choice. So if we want to be able to change the autopilot profile in the future, rather than having the exact one that we've got in the environment right now, then we should disconnect the network cable, the virtual network cable, virtual network adapter from this virtual machine. Because if we allow it to boot with the network cable attached, then it will pick up the current autopilot profile and save it in cache for us. So if we don't want to do that and we want a bit more flexibility with this virtual machine, then we should remove the network adapter and get this machine back into the Airbox experience and then sysprep it at this stage. So that's actually what I'm going to do. And in, in Michael's blog, he actually says that his preference is no network booted to the start of uh, out of box experience, which is what I'm going to show you here. Okay, so that machine is now shut down. Jump into settings remove this network adapter, choose apply, and we're all good. Now we get this machine back into the out-of-box experience, and it kind of doesn't really matter at this stage that the device isn't in the right group for autopilot because this device isn't contacting autopilot at all. There's no, there's no network adapter. So we wait until it gets into the out-of-box experience, create a checkpoint, and then we're able to use this moving forward for autopilot testing. And now the machine is at the out of box experience and it's not got a network adapter attached. We can just create a checkpoint. Choose action, checkpoint, and we'll call it autopilot template. 
attitude yes and in a few seconds checkpoint succeeded we're good to go we can tear this machine down now before you build with this machine we need to make sure that the device has the autopilot profile so we'll head back to the Intune app in center and check that this device has the profile status it's assigning right now so in a few minutes it will have the profile assigned and we'll be ready to test with this virtual machine hopefully this helps you understand how we can repeat autopilot testing using a virtual machine see you next time <laughs>